All right, it is one o'clock. So uh, we're gonna get people uh, joining us, I'm sure, as the minutes go on, but uh, I'm gonna turn it over to you. So um, I'm gonna yap for about two minutes and then I'll shut up and get out of the way. Uh, first of all, welcome to all the students and also advisors, uh, teachers who are uh, sitting in. Uh, first of all, it's remarkable that you're doing this. Uh, second of all, uh, it looks like you're getting something out of it, which is terrific. Uh, my name's Ken Stone. I'm a, a board member for STN. Uh, I've been a judge and a presenter at STN since the very first year, uh, 20 years ago, um, and joined the board a few years ago. Uh, but I'm not here to talk about myself. I'm here to talk about uh, Jeremy Menard, who's going to be doing a um, session on the art of the pitch, which you all know. Uh, what you may not know about Jeremy uh, and Ithaca is that Ithaca College has for years had one of the great reputations inside the news industry uh, for producing really well-qualified, uh, experienced people. Um, the, I was out on the East Coast for a number of years, and the number of reporters either in my newsroom or who worked across town for me who came from Ithaca, I think outnumbered just about any other school. So anyway, that's just another way of saying that uh, Jeremy works at a, a, a college that is serious about preparing real life professionals. And so uh, we're excited to have his expertise for the next 45 minutes. Uh, for those of you um, sitting in, uh, we are gonna hold this to 45 minutes. Uh, due to Zoom technology, we literally have to get out of the electronic room to let the next person sign on. So we may run one or two minutes long, but we're gonna be pretty strict about the time limitations. And just so you know, and I think you've, most of you probably already know this, you've sat in on other sessions, uh, this uh, is being recorded. Uh, so, and it will be put up on the SDN website somewhere wonderful so that people will have access it, to it after the fact. Uh, Jeremy tells me there's going to be some time for Q&A, um, but um, I think with that, I'll shut up. I'm going to turn it over to Jeremy. Um, have a good time. Ken, thank you so much for that introduction. Uh, and welcome to everyone. Thank you for taking some time out of your Monday to join me today. I hope wherever you're tuning in today, the weather might be a little bit better than it is here in Ithaca, New York. I was just telling Ken moments ago uh, that we're getting ready for a about a foot of snow. And uh, don't want you to, to scare you by any means with the, the snow. It's pretty standard this time of year in upstate New York. Uh, but I know the students on campus are uh, already getting ready to, uh, to go sledding and do all those kind of fun outdoor winter activities after their classes let out. A little bit uh, later but um, yes this is the art of the pitch uh, putting ideas into production and my name is Jeremy Menard as Ken said I'm the manager of television and radio operations in the Roy H Park School of Communications at Ithaca College in Ithaca New York and in my role I'm the full-time staff advisor and general manager for both campus radio stations that's WICB FM BIC radio our online radio station along with Ithaca College Television, ICTV, Ithaca's student-run television station. So uh, in the Park School of Communications, as Ken was talking about alums and his interaction with uh, those in the industry, um, people who go into the news industry, sports, uh, producing, whatever it is out of the Park School, um, something that they all have in common is they've all kind of cut their teeth getting experience with their, the student media organizations, again, the radio and television stations. And throughout this, uh, this, I guess what we have, 45 minutes, right, uh, Ken? We're gonna be talking um, about putting together an idea to pitch it, to make a proposal, and to ultimately get your idea on the air. When we have students who come to the Park School, one of the first questions a lot of them ask me is, how do I get my own TV show? Or how do I get my own radio show? Well, you gotta pitch it, and I'm gonna teach you how to do that. So I'm now going to share my screen. I have a, uh, a presentation lined up for you. Thank you. I hope you can all see that. The Art of the Pitch, putting ideas into production. Again, my name is Jeremy Menard. So you might be asking yourself, what is a pitch? Outside of the game of baseball, it's the presentation of a proposal and a plan. In a pitch, when you're up in front of a group of decision makers, you talk about, this is my idea. This is why it's important. And this is how it will ultimately be produced. What's a proposal? Well, during a pitch, that is what you talk about. During a pitch is the actual art of talking to some decision makers in presenting a proposal. A proposal outlines the details of an idea. As you can see on the screen, that's the who, what, where, 
why, when, and how. You detail everything in your proposal. And there's two parts to a TV proposal. And again, because this is STN, Student Television Network, and with my background with ICTV, we're gonna be focusing a lot on uh, the idea of a television proposal, but it's broken into two parts. You have the program side and you have the production side. Before we really jump into the details and really the guts of this presentation, you might be asking yourself, why does this matter? Why is this important? Well, everyone needs to pitch at some point. Maybe it's a television show for your student run TV station. Maybe you have a, a, another production idea. Maybe it's a student film. Maybe it's just a class project that has nothing to do with television or film or production. Everyone has to pitch themselves at some point as you look to get a job or an internship, or heck, maybe you're just pitching weekend plans with friends, or maybe you're pitching what you think your family should have for dinner. The pitch is trying to get someone to go along with your idea in your proposal. Again, there's a lot of different things you can pitch. TV shows, films, production ideas, class projects, pitching yourself for a job or an internship, or um, maybe you might be looking at that last one and saying, that's crazy. Oh yeah, pitching weekend plans with friends or, or maybe a meal to have with your family. So I told you on, the, on some of the previous slides that a proposal is broken into two different sections. You have the program side and you have the production side. Let's start by taking a look at the program proposal. And what you're talking about there is describing what, again, going off the idea of a TV show, what that TV show is going to look like. So the who, who's in the TV show? You have the actors, you have hosts, depending on the type of show it is, you have contestants, you have players, it's the who, what is going on in the, the uh, actual program. Then you have the what, well, what's it all about? What's the plot? What's the format? Is it a genre? Um, all of the different things that go into there. And of course, with the who, whether it's players, contestants, hosts, actors, a lot of that will become much more clear with what the what is. Where? Where's the setting? Where's the location? What's the layout of the show? Where does it take place? When? How often would you like to see this show actually air? Is it once a week? Is it twice a week? Is it monthly? Um, whatever it is. Why? Why is it important? What is the purpose of this program? In many cases, the why or the purpose is going to be to entertain, but maybe it's also to educate. There's a lot of different whys that you can have. And finally, how are you gonna pull it off? How are you gonna pull off the production? And that leads into the production proposal. How is it going to be produced? So again, the program side is what the audience sees, what it looks like, the details, the plot. The production side of it is how are you actually gonna pull it off? So who? Who's involved with the production side? You have producers, you have directors, you have the technical crew, you have engineers, the people making it happen. The what? Is it live? Is it a live show? For any sports fans out there, sports broadcast, if we're talking about a program of coverage of, let's say, a football game, it's gonna most likely be live. If you have a show that is maybe seen to be live, but is recorded earlier in the day, you would have what's called live to tape. You tape it live, you put it on tape, and you play it back at a later time. Is it produced? Is it edited with a lot of post-production? A lot of films are shot and then pieced together. The where, what are the shooting locations? If this is a film, where are you planning to shoot it? Where you shoot it might not be exactly where it takes place. Um, I'm sure you know in a lot of films, maybe they'll shoot in a, a small town or shoot in a smaller city and then make it look like Chicago or New York or Philadelphia or LA or, or what have you. So where it's actually shot might be different than where it takes place on the programming side. When, what's the production schedule? When are you actually going to shoot it? And why, why is this your production plan? And ultimately that comes back to what's available equipment wise and ultimately budget. Maybe you're shooting in one location because it's a little bit cheaper uh, than somewhere else. These are the type of things that you need to think about when putting together a proposal as you get ready for a pitch. Here's some more details to include going beyond the who, what, where, when, why, and how. Think to yourself, as you put together your proposal, what makes this program unique? Why will people want to watch it? 
Why should a production company invest time, energy, and money into your program? What makes it special and unique? Who is the intended audience of the program? This, if you can answer this question, it might help you answer some of the other questions that go along with the program and production proposal. Who's the intended audience of the program? Is it children? Is it adults? Is it men? Is it women? Who is it? How will the program be marketed to audience? This also has a lot to do with the intended audience of the program, but are you planning on marketing over just social media or are you doing it print ads? Would you like to be advertised um, amongst, uh, alongside other TV shows or during television programs? What's the expected cost of the program? This is the one that uh, the decision makers are gonna play clo pay close attention to. How much is it going to cost to pull it off? And uh, also goes back to your production proposal. And what are some potential obstacles? I'm sure there's gonna be questions that the decision makers have for your program and your production. The key is to make sure you get out in, in front with those early so that you can answer the questions before they even ask them. And a question they're gonna ask is, what are some issues or potential obstacles that could arise? Um, one that we talk about a lot with students, when students are pitching shows uh, for ICTV, something we talk a lot about is weather. A lot of students pitch uh, comedies or dramas or episodic shows, and they would love to always shoot them during the spring semester on Ithaca's campus. Well, my advice is always, I recommend you shoot a lot of it inside as opposed to outside, because the weather can be very kind of tricky during a spring semester. Sometimes we have great spring weather in upstate New York during the entire month of April and into May. I think last year we had uh, a small snow shower in May. So you really never know. Those are some potential obstacles, things to think about. I'm gonna share an example of a pitch that was delivered to ICTV this past fall. And to give you a little bit of background about ICTV, as I noted, it's the student-run television station at Ithaca College. It's actually the oldest uh, student-run cable college channel in the entire world, founded in 1958. Um, it's all student-run. We have over 20 shows in production uh, any given week during the academic semester. And at the end of every semester, we have student producers put together pitches um, for programming, and uh, the pitches are decided upon with the proposals and ultimately you decide if that show is to be put in production for the following semester. So this is a pitch that was delivered to us and these are details from the actual proposal for a show called So You Think You Know Sports that was delivered to us at the end of the fall, this past fall semester and is actually, uh, I will tell you out in front, it was accepted uh, and it will be in production this spring. So it's a weekly sports trivia game show and I'm gonna show you some of the details and show you the kind of planning that goes into a proposal and a pitch. So the program, it's described as student contestants navigate four rounds of sports trivia, excuse me, covering a variety of sports, teams, leagues, and athletes in rotating trivia games. So that's kind of what it is, who it is. You have student contestants, what it is. It's a sports trivia show. Um, when does it take place? It takes place. Uh, during modern times production it's produced live to tape once a week in ictv studio a so that's not all the details that you would have in a who what why where when uh and how um i think i gave you a couple extra on that um but it's a produced live to tape show inside a television studio and they even included a tagline teams test their sports knowledge for ultimate glory So the abbreviation for the show, So You Think You Know Sports, that's at the top, we call it SciTight. In their proposal, they noted, why should ICTV pick up the show? They listed a couple reasons here. The first one you can see, the concept of a sports trivia game show entices many, from Ithaca athletes to trivia buffs. There are not many other shows on ICTV like this one. Well, there's a couple good selling points. One, sports, sports trivia in particular, uh, and game shows, they, uh, According to these producers, they are popular and audiences like them. Uh, there's not too many other shows on ICTV like this. While we do have game shows, we don't have any sports trivia game shows. Um, it notes in reason two, it's a unique blend of sports and entertainment, allowing people with varied interests to work together. Um, that's kind of uh, talking on the side of student production. And then at the bottom, you see 
opens up a lot of new opportunities for people. It gives an opportunity for contestants uh, to get in front of the camera who maybe in other shows might not feel as comfortable. So in their proposal, noting why it would be great to have it on the air, but also the educational opportunities that it would prevent, uh, excuse me, present uh, for other student cast members. Uh, also in the proposal, they outlined a rundown of a show. So it's broken into three blocks. You can see uh, that each block is, or excuse me, block A and block C are both six and a half minutes long, while um, the uh, B block is the longest at 12 and a half. And altogether, this comes out to a little under a 30 minute show. So in block A, you have the introduction of contestants um, being done by a student host. Uh, making note of the rules of the game. And then you have your first trivia game right there in the A block after the, uh, the first round of play, go to a minute and a half break. In the B block, you welcome back the audience. You get ready for game two and then go into game three. And then the final showdown in the announcing of the champions and uh, bidding farewell to the audience is held in the C block. So again, it's four games. Uh, over uh, three rounds and three different blocks. And if you're wondering what those games look like, this was also included in the pitch. Uh, examples of the games, you can see they have kind of fun names. My favorite is, uh, instead of Alma Mater, Alma Matters, uh, where a player's given a team's name and then you have to uh, discuss what school, be the first contestant to name what school that player attended. You have fill in the blank, retro arcade, which are um, kind of, Throwback questions, as uh, the producers noted. Uh, as you can see, they put questions are given about oldies but goodies. Then you have things like who has more, the lineup card, short-term memory. I'll give you a second to take a look at them. Um, and all of the questions are put together by the producers as well as a team of researchers. Again, because this was uh, pitched to Ithaca College Television, all of these roles are held by uh, enrolled students at Ithaca College. And again, I'm actually going back quickly with the games. So you have several of them listed, about a dozen different games listed. Uh, there are four games to every show. So not every single one is included in each show. Instead, you have um, four in each show, 30-minute show, that are rotated from week to week. Now taking a look at um, some more details. The producers talked about the layouts of the actual studio. What would it look like? What's the setup going to look like? The host would stand in the middle of the two couches with a spotlight on the host to better the lighting situation in the studio. Um, it talks about some other equipment that it would need, ideas on lighting, camera layout, uh, and then also at the bottom, section eight of the proposal, uh, the publicity plan. Well, how are we going to share it? And uh, something that is done by most of the shows on ICTV, it's spread through social media. Um, we also air promos during our weekly air nights on the cable channel, but for the most part, social media and also just old fashioned posters on campus uh, are, are top ways that we spread word about the shows. Um, but we just went through a lot there and those are some of the details, as you can see, that are included in a show proposal and things to think about. And that covered both the programming side, the production side, and this is even the shooting schedule uh, for the show throughout the semester. You can see that the idea is to start working on show number one tomorrow on February 16th. And that schedule goes um, right through, um, through the, uh, the year. As you can see, there's a couple different things. This actually carries into uh, the fall as well. So kind of looking forward to the, uh, not only this academic year, but into next as well. So going through, talking about that show, that gives you an idea of what the show actually looks like when they're working on it. Um, you have uh, two teams made up of two student contestants, the table in the front with a, a football helmet. You have the lockers over uh, to the left behind the contestants on the couches, two couches, a monitor in the middle. Um, and what you can't see is the host that is off screen in uh, kind of to the left of, of the student who's in that white New York Giants jersey. Off to the left, you have a, a host in front of a monitor um, as well. But back in uh, when we were on campus, about a year ago in the previous spring, the spring 2020 semester, this is what the layout uh, looked like in uh, Studio A in the Park School. Just wanna give you a little idea of what 
uh, so you think you know sports looks like. So that gives you an example of what a proposal looks like. And I now wanted to go through and kind of do a little bit of a fill in the blanks. And I want you uh, from wherever you are watching to kind of go along with me, look on the screen and answer to yourself, try to fill in the blanks as if you were putting together this program and production proposal. So the first one that we'll look at, and we're going to use the example of the television show Survivor. I thought this would be a good one to go with because um, I feel like just about everyone at some point has watched at least a episode of Survivor. If not, you've seen interviews or information about it. I know it's not as uh, popular as it was maybe, I believe it premiered about 20 years ago um, in the early 2000s. Um, and I believe they're up over 40 seasons. Um, and I will admit that I watched it when it first came out. And I've actually started rewatching uh, some of the series recently um, during the current pandemic and, and having an opportunity to kind of binge TV shows. But let's go through and let's kind of do this together, okay? So what do you think the pitch looked like for Survivor on CBS? You had a group of producers. You had people who had the idea for this reality television show. And keep in mind that when the show was pitched, there wasn't nearly as many reality television shows as you have on television now. It was among one of the, the very first um, that gained a lot of uh, national attention. So think about the show Survivor. Putting together a proposal, what would you fill out for the program portion? So again, that means the who, the what, where, when, and why. Think about it to yourself, and I will go with you and we'll fill it all in together and see if you were correct. So with the programming side, who is it? Who's on camera? Well, you have contestants, right? And it's changed over seasons. I believe they've gone from 20 to 30 at different points. The who, you have the contestants. Who else do you see on camera? Well, you see Jeff Probst, who's been the longtime host of the show. What is it? Well, it's a game show. It's a, it's a survival game show that takes place where? Well, all over the world different locations. They've shot it on islands, uh, Thailand, Africa, the Outback, um, I'm trying to think the Philippines, Nicaragua, different areas all across the globe. So we have the who, you have the contestants, you have Jeff Probst, the host. What? It's a survival game show pitting two teams against each other or tribes. Where is it? Well, anywhere in the world that you think would be a, a cool um, kind of exotic location. When? takes place in modern times. Um, it's not like a retro show or, or supposed to take place in the future or anything like that. It takes place in real time. And why? Why this program? Well, because it's entertaining. That's what goes into this, this programming. People love the scheming and the idea of outwit and outlast and outsurvive. Why? Because it's an entertainment show and someone has a chance to win the million dollar prize. On the production side, well, how do you pull off a survivor, survival reality game show. Well, you need to have a crew who captured it all on camera. So you have a camera crew that um, spends time on the island or the location with the cast members. You also have producers, of course, and directors and uh, a team of editors, I'm sure. Um, what? It is a show that's shot as if it's live but then goes to a post-production process and then goes uh, and is shown, um, I'm not exactly sure when, but uh, several months later, um, not as it's happening. Um, and it's, it's once a week over the course of the entire season. Um, where is it shot? Well, wherever the location is specified on the programming side. Um, when does the production happen? Um, going back to the what, it's shot at a point in time and then it airs. Um, at a later time over the course of the entire series. Excuse me, just a little sip of water. And um, the, why, basic, uh, the, the why portion of the production will dictate where it's shot, how many uh, camera operators do you have, how big is your editing team. A lot of that comes back to availability, comes back to skill level, and comes back to budget. How much money are we working with for this show, which uh, I don't have that number, but I'm just guessing, quite a bit of money, I, I, would, uh, I would imagine. Other things to think about. What makes this program unique? When it was pitched, it was, again, among the first ever reality TV shows. And of course, 
um, really is the gold standard for those survival type of shows. And a lot of other, other survival shows that maybe are a little bit more primitive um, or maybe much more true survival based, um, a lot of those have come after uh, Survivor's been on the air. Who's the intended audience of the program? Um, it's a little bit more for, um, I would say, teenagers and more mature audiences. It's not intended for uh, children by any means. How will the program be marketed to audiences? Um, you have billboards. Uh, when it first came out, you had billboards being on the side of buses, on the top of taxi cabs in uh, major cities. Um, social media didn't have the same reach it had. So a lot of it was um, cross promotion on other television shows as well. What's the expected cost of the program? Something that would be included. Again, I don't have that number by any means, but other potential obstacles. You have um, a lack of viewership. You have people getting sick. You have things going wrong with the contestants that could ultimately derail you from being able to make it to the end of the season. Or maybe uh, you have issues with uh, the actual production, not being able to, uh, to pull it off. When presenting a proposal, again, the presentation of a proposal is known as the pitch. And I hope my examples there of So You Think You Know Sports uh, and also Survivor, I, Survivor I, I hope those were helpful in getting a better idea of what goes into a proposal and ultimately is shared during a pitch. But the keys, in my opinion, be prepared. Go through all those checklists, the who, what, where, when, why, and how. Be able to answer every single one of those questions. And to do that, you need to have a great attention to detail. I think it's always important, going back to that previous slide, looking at some other questions that you might want to keep in mind. The reason you want to do that is you don't want to get caught flat-footed during a pitch. If a decision maker says, well, how are you going to do this? Or where do you think it should be shot? Or how much money do you need? You don't want to say, oh, I don't know. Because that could be your only shot at pitching this show. So you wanna make sure that you have an answer to every single question uh, in many cases during your pitch. If you can get out in front and you can ask and answer a question before the decision maker can, that means you really know what you're doing. And finally, it just goes the same thing with a uh, job interview or, or any type of presentation, be confident. Make sure you know what you're talking about and go in passionate, enthusiastic, and energized about your idea. To me, those are the three keys to a successful pitch. Be prepared, show great attention to detail, and be confident. Because again, when you're pitching an idea, you are asking for a decision maker to provide you with uh, money, a budget, you're asking them to provide you with time, and energy, and a crew, uh, and advice, and guidance, and everything else. So you're asking for a pretty major investment. So make sure during your pitch, you explain fully why they should give you that investment. So something that I want to do, and um, I'm now going to stop sharing my screen here for a moment. Uh, that way I have a, a better view of the chat screen and I can go through here. And this is where I want uh, a little bit of your participation because I want us to pitch a show together. And I want you to try to answer some of these questions and uh, I hope you have already kept an eye on the who, what, where, when, and why, and how that I've been talking about. But let's pitch a show together, and let's make that show a light, late night talk show. So I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with Jimmy Fallon or Jimmy Kimmel's show um, or other television shows like The Daily Show with Trevor Noah uh, or maybe uh, John Oliver the different shows that air later in the evening. So let's imagine that we're putting to, uh, together a proposal and getting ready to pitch a late night talk show. So in the chat, please do not be, uh, do not be shy. I wanna do this with you. If we're pitching a late night talk show, who would you like to host it? Think about the who. Who would you like to see host this type of show? Who would you like to see serve as the announcer? Who would you like to serve as the interview guest? Who would you like to see on the show? Um, maybe who's your favorite music artist? Who would you love to see perform? Maybe for hosts, I mean, you can think outside the box, right? Again, 
I'd love to see what your suggestions are. Um, I've actually, first one comes in, Will Ferrell. Let's have a late night talk show hosted by Will Ferrell. And maybe some of the interview guests um, can be um, maybe former cast members from Saturday Night Live. And it can be a comedy based show. Anyone else that they'd like to see host a show? I've hosted this presentation a few times over the last couple of years, and I've had uh, someone said, um, former President Barack Obama, that they would love to see host the show, um, and, and to, to kind of put a presidential spin on the conversation. Um, we had someone one year uh, develop an idea based around Kermit the Frog, the Muppet, hosting uh, a late night talk show. Weird Al Yankovic is another one that comes in. Um, perhaps. Uh, with Weird Al, you wouldn't even need a music guest. Maybe Weird Al can't be the music guest uh, hosting his own show every week. What would be the format of the show? What type of topics? Let's say Will Ferrell and Weird Al are going to be our hosts. What kind of topics would you like to, to see them discuss? Maybe with Will Ferrell, it would be very comedy-based, maybe movie-based. Weird Al could be very music-based, perhaps. Um, also think about where would this type of show take place? Would you want it to be hosted in New York City or Los Angeles or um, Chicago, Philly, uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota, or maybe you would have it uh, in a much smaller town? Um, one of the suggestions coming in the chat right now, movie experiences. Have Will Ferrell um, talk to other actors and actresses and talk about his personal experience on movies and Saturday Night Live and, and everything else. Maybe bring on um, supporting actors from the different movies uh, that Will Ferrell was a part of. Well, you think about the, so the format of the show, talking about movie experiences, where would it be? Probably on a stage and a set, but what city in the United States? Um, when and how often does it air? Uh, most late night talk shows are Monday through Friday after about 10 o'clock. And then why? What's the goal of the purpose of this program? And it seems like um, based on the Will Ferrell and Weird Al suggestions, um, maybe comedy-based, entertainment-based, um, and then maybe some of the interview guests could even be um, educational-based or uh, in, instructional. But um, it seems like we're, we're working on an entertainment-style uh, late-night talk show. Um, one of the years when I was doing this presentation, um, I like that, Atlanta, because the production taxes are low. You know how to talk already to uh, a decision maker. Anything you can do to keep the budget low, people love that. <laughs> but that goes into production. Um, the number of technical crew members that you would need to pull this off. When will the program be filmed? Would it be live or most likely recorded earlier in the day uh, to play back in the evening? Uh, where is it filmed? Uh, based on what we're talking about, sounds like mostly in a studio. Again, production taxes are low. Um, with the, uh, the Weird Al and Will Ferrell talk show coming out of Atlanta, Georgia. Um, when is it filmed? Probably daily. And what's the goal and the purpose of the program, the why on the production side? Well, the goal is to have fun. And the goal is to entertain and with the star power of Will Ferrell or Weird Al um, to bring in a lot of nightly, um, nightly viewers. So... We worked on that together and we were able to, uh, to fill out a lot of those questions. And as we go through all this, and before I guess move on, anyone else have anything they'd want to add in the chat? Any other ideas for uh, a talk show like this? And I want to say thank you for uh, your suggestions. I like the idea of a Will Ferrell or a, a Weird Al show. I do think people would, uh, to watch this, any other elements that you'd like to share? Hey, Jeremy, this is Ken. Uh, just so you know, if, if uh, I can turn on people's microphones if they would prefer to chat that way. But. Okay, well, maybe we'll do that during the, the Q&A session, which we're getting close to, because I do want to, to hear from all of you uh, on your ideas and uh, kind of to try to personalize this presentation to be as helpful as possible. Because I will note, um, going back to a slide that was had uh, earlier in the presentation where I asked, well, why is this important? Why do pitches why do proposals, why does all of this matter? Well, it's because everyone needs to pitch at some point, whether it's a TV show idea like we're talking about right now, whether it's a production idea for a student film, or maybe at your high school, it's uh, just a morning announcements, 
or maybe even want to have a small program that talks about the, the, the lunch food of the day or whatever it is, the lunch menu, whatever it is, whatever project you're working on, um, you need to pitch it to somebody, whether it's trying to get your friends to sign off on it to, to help you out with the project, or maybe you're trying to pitch it to your, your teachers or your family members, whoever it is that you need help with and you want support from. Um, class projects, uh, again, really, when you put together a resume for yourself and you're applying to jobs and internships or applying to colleges, really your resume is kind of like a proposal. You're talking about, this is who I am, this is all the different things that I did, and this is why uh, you should move forward with my resume and, and maybe admit me into your college or um, accept me into your internship program or, or the job. Um, or even, I mean, we pitch every single day, whether it's pitching, um, when I call up my wife and say, hey, what do you want to have for dinner? I'm really having tacos. This is why we should be having tacos for dinner tonight, or we should be having pizza for dinner, or what have you. Or maybe you want to go see a movie with your friends, and uh, I, don't, I don't really want to see that movie. You pitch it to them. Are you sure? Because this is what the movie's about, and it looks pretty awesome. Let me tell you something about it. We pitch all the time. So it's, it's good to kind of have these skills um, as you move forward. So at this point, um, I'm, I'm through all my slides. I understand that, uh, that we're, we're not, uh, I'm not screen sharing right now. But at this point, I do want to open up to questions. I know, Ken, we have about 10 minutes remaining. Um, so I want to open up to everyone who's in the call right now. If you have any questions about what I just went through, uh, now's the time. Um, and you can either put them in the chat, or if you would like to come to screen, um, I'd be happy to, uh, to chat with you that way. And this is Ken. Just so you know, I've allowed everybody to talk. Um, uh, the one person who we're having a hard time doing that with is Devin, has to do with the fact that he's got an older version of Zoom. So apologize about that. Uh, but guest talking permitted. So if you want to turn off your uh, mute and uh, ask Jeremy a question, now's the time. And we can do questions about the presentation. Uh, we can do um, questions about uh, kind of putting together a student production uh, or any, of course, any questions you have about Ithaca College and, and student uh, television as well. But the first one that came in um, from Grace that says, what are some commonalities across poor pitches that you've seen? Um, so again, with Ithaca College Television, we get probably close to 30 to 40 pitches every single semester. Uh, and we generally green light between 20 and 25 shows. Um, so what I'm personally looking for goes back to those keys to pitching. Be prepared, attention to detail, and confidence. And what I've seen across um, commonalities among poor pitches are people not doing that, so not being prepared. Um, the worst thing you can do is, this is supposed to be your idea, uh, lack of a ter better term, this is kind of your baby, right? The idea. The whole idea of a proposal is to take the idea you have, to answer all the questions, to stretch it out so that you can then pitch it and present it to someone. So, if you are presenting it to me and you want me to sign off and give my time and my energy and my money and my capital and a budget, um, you should be able to answer all my questions or at least have a good idea. So if someone comes with something, gives me an idea, and I said, well, how are you going to do this? And their response is, oh, I don't know, or, uh, or I haven't thought about that yet. To me, that shows that this idea just isn't ready yet for the proposal and the pitch process. And it's okay. It's, it, remember this too, is just because you have an idea, it might take a little bit of time to get you ready to the proposal and the pitch process. Because you have an idea, it might not be ready for programming or production just yet. But to me, uh, the poor pitches that I've seen, a lot of it comes down to a lack of preparation or a lack of attention to detail. Because if this is your idea and you're pitching it to me, you should be able to answer just about every single question um, and have a pretty a, a good idea of how you're going to kind of pull it off. And I think the best way before you get ready for a pitch to ask yourself whether or not you think you are ready to pitch it, you should be able to answer the who, what, where, when, why, and how questions. But you should also be able to answer those extra questions that I put on the screen during the presentation. The what makes it unique? 
or who's the intended audience? How are we going to pay for it? How are we going to market it? Why will people tune in? If you can answer all those questions and you're prepared on that front, you will be prepared to answer any question inside of uh, an actual proposal. But um, also, uh, one last thing, Grace, to going off that commonalities, um, just because you have an idea, you have to also think if it's a good fit for the organization that you're pitching it to, right? So let's say um, someone is pitching a, in the past when I've done these presentations, someone pitched, when we were talking about late night talk shows, someone talked about a late night talk show meant just for pets. And it was gonna be all based around um, conversations with special pets and um, different dog breeds and kind of like a, a Jack Hanna type of thing while bringing on um, different animals and, and um, training tips and et cetera, et cetera. So they were talking about pitching that show to MTV. And I remember saying, well, why would you pitch it to MTV? If you could have an idea, wouldn't you think you'd have a much better idea of pitching it to a network like Animal Planet, a network that's all based on pet and animal programming? I think you'd have a better chance. It's more of a fit for that station than it would be for MTV or maybe a network like ABC or NBC or something along those lines. Unless you know that MTV is looking to expand um, into, uh, I got pet programming, uh, something like Animal Planet might be a little bit better. So knowing your audience um, and kind of having an idea of, of who you are uh, pitching to. So uh, thank you for the question. Any other questions? I have a, a couple more minutes here as we wrap things up. What is the best way to stay organized while forming your pitch? Um, so I'm going to show you my, my uh, I kind of have a, a slide sheet here. Um, I think the easiest thing, and this is, I, I decided to um, stop screen sharing, but as you can see, some of those slides, they have just, just answer the questions, the who, what, where, when, and why, and how, just answer them. Make yourself a worksheet and answer all those questions and write them out. So then when you are going together and you're, you're kind of checking the boxes and like, hey, do I know everything? Have I paid attention to detail and do all of that kind of stuff. Um, if you have it all written down and you kind of organize yourself that way, I think it will help. Um, and, and I'm happy, I'm gonna share my uh, contact information at the end here. So if you want a copy of the slides or you want um, some of these example worksheets and questions, um, I'm happy to pass them along because I think if you're just writing it out, talking it through um, and going through, answering those who, what, where, when, why, and how, um, I think that will be your best bet. Um, and another question from Evan says, how much detail do you need to explain the cost and how do you calculate the total cost of a program that doesn't yet exist? That's a heck of a question. Um, the biggest thing is to, before pitching, just get a general idea of what type of budget is allotted. So at Ithaca College, um, there's a lot of things that students don't need to worry about when it comes to budget that you might if you were pitching to a network or, or something along those lines. For example, uh, our student television station, we have access to all of the studios. So you don't have to worry about studio time. Generally, you'd have to rent studio time in the real world. Um, you would also, because your students at a student television station are cast and crew, you don't have to worry about wages. They're all volunteers. But in the real world, you'd have to pay your cast. You'd have to pay your crew. Um, you would also have to worry about insurance costs. Um, how much is it gonna cost to get to, to get someone like Will Ferrell to host the talk show or, or whatever the idea is. Um, asking around is your best way to, to get a lot of those costs. But if you are pitching a show for your high school TV station or a college TV station, the best thing to do is ask around to the advisor, to the student leaders of the organization to find out what resources and what type of, of uh, budget you already have in place. And I hope that answered your question. Um, and I believe I'm about to get kicked out of here in a second. So before I do, I'm going to just drop in the chat. Um, this is a form. If you'd like to learn more about Ithaca College, please fill out that form. It's just asking for your name, um, your hometown, and your high school, um, and we can follow up with some more information. And, and if you attended this session, I, I please ask that you do fill that out. Um, and I will also leave my um, email address as well in the chat. Um, if you could, uh, if you have any follow-up questions, please reach out to me. My name is Jeremy Menard. So my email address is jmenard at ithaca.edu. That's J-M-E-N 
ARD at Ithaca.edu. Um, and I hope you can also see that Google Form link that was also dropped that I put moments ago. Ken, can you see it on your end? Yes, I can. Okay. Oh, actually, yep, sorry, let me send that again. I think I only sent that to me and Ken. Hang on a second before we wrap things up here, Ken. So there's the link um, to the, the Google form as well as to my email address. So I, uh, I hope that went through now. Can, can people see it now? Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Uh, I believe, Ken, I'm, I'm out of time. Is that right? You are out of time. Uh, thank you, Jeremy. We really appreciate it. Uh, thank you all students and teachers for uh, joining in. Uh, we're going to shut this down now so we can get uh, things ready for the next presentation. So thank you. Have a great day. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.